So I keep having this thought, right, that one day when I'm like a proper grown up, I'm gonna have a kid and I think about what I want for that kid. And the thought that keeps popping up in my head is, I hope my kid doesn't worry a lot. Like, I hope he's not a worrier because above all else, I think this is the single biggest internal factor that determines your happiness most. And I understand that's quite a statement, but just let me explain. When you're young, you think that happiness is a consequence of ticking boxes. You think it comes after you achieve or obtain things. When you find the girl or get the career or achieve the status. When you become successful enough to feel worthy of respect. When you get the fast car or the big house. Have the family or finally have the free time to spend on what you love most. And these are all great things, but they're really all just milestones. They're just markers along a much longer path consisting of all the work and progress and steps that went towards finally getting there. And the truth is, most of your life is not the thrill of finally getting there. Most of it is just being somewhere along the way. Most of your life is not the day that you lose your virginity or graduate or your wedding day or the day your firstborn arrives or the day you retire or buy a fucking yacht or win a Nobel Prize or get a million subscribers on YouTube. Most of your life is just proper normal shit. Most of your life is basically a Tuesday afternoon. It's doing a bit of work, going to shop for milk and bread, deciding which film to watch on Netflix, having a coffee in the morning, being stuck in traffic, waiting for your dinner to be ready, filling out forms, standing in queues, brushing your teeth. Even for the person with the most exciting life, still, the majority of it is a string of very normal moments. And so the real question becomes, what's your normal? What are you thinking about when your mind drifts? Can you feel present? Can you appreciate the little things? How comfortable do you feel when there's no distraction? And how do you think about the future? And the one thing that will fuck up every single normal moment you have is worrying. Because worrying makes any uncertainty something to be scared of rather than something to be excited about. It'll keep you occupied thinking about the bad stuff that might happen and stop you from enjoying the good stuff that actually does happen. It makes the worst case scenario seem way more likely than it actually ever is. It hinders your ability to concentrate and to be creative. It makes you overly risk averse and it will dull all of the best parts of your everyday normal life that deserve to be appreciated. Because you know what tastes better than peanut butter and banana on a bagel? It's peanut butter and banana on a bagel when you're not worrying about shit. Are you all right? What, what's wrong? I'm just really worried because uh, I've got drama going on at work because my manager's really mad because I stole his sandwich. So I'm just worried. Oh, don't worry. Well, I am worried. Ah, uh, well, don't. Oh. oh, okay. That's better then. Thanks, cool. Woo! <laughs> don't worry. Perhaps the most impotent phrase in the English language. I don't think there has ever been a time that phrase has actually helped anyone and the reason it doesn't help is because in the short term, worrying isn't a choice. It's no more of a choice than having a foot fetish or the hiccups. It's involuntary. And so if I make a video saying, worrying is bad for you, don't do it. It's not really gonna achieve much. I think to overcome anything, you must first try to understand it. So I wanna dig a little bit deeper and ask why we do it in the first place so that maybe we can unravel some shit and get out of the thoughts and behaviors that cause us to worry. Misjudging the importance and gravity of situations. Being the resilient creatures that we are, we have this ability to acclimate to the present situation however extreme and that's a good thing 
if you are in prison or living in poverty or some other difficult circumstances because although these people certainly do suffer they can often get to a point where everything is normalized such that the day-to-day -day stress levels that they feel are survivable or even manageable sometimes people can even find nuggets of happiness in an existence which seems incomprehensible to others and one of the weird psychological quirks of being a human is that this normalization seems to work both ways so that even in relatively good circumstances we will find something to worry about we will promote our meager concerns up the ladder of stress factors it's almost as if we have these available slots for worrying inside our head and we will do what we can to fill them and so even people in good situations can often experience stress levels that match or even exceed those of people in objectively worse situations. It's only when you really have something to worry about that you can truly grasp how trivial the rest of your worries are. And I think one of the challenges of trying to become a somewhat emotionally developed human is attempting to see the world with a balanced perspective when truly you can only really view it through your own biased lens forged by your own individual experiences. So I'm not saying that only people who live in the very worst circumstances have permission to worry, but we do have to have some sense of perspective, you know, to this day, many people are born, live a very short and violence-filled life before dying a gruesome and unnecessary death before ever having had a chance at what we call everyday life. Exaggerating the likelihood of bad things happening. The trouble is we are just emotional creatures and your innate responses don't really give a shit about statistical probability. So if you catch a disease with a 99% survival rate, your odds are pretty good. But you're probably still going to shit yourself, run around, ticking shit off your bucket list, writing a will, telling your family all the cheesy stuff that you were too scared to say before you thought you were facing impending doom, right? Some people aren't like this though. Some people seem to have this kind of blasé, it'll be alright type attitude towards life. And these are the people who seem to generally take more risks. And so do they take more risks because they have this attitude? Or do they have this attitude because they take more risks? I would suspect maybe a bit of both, but probably the latter. And so I think one of the only ways you can get over this is just through continuous progressive exposure to risk until you can really prove to yourself time and time again that the worst case scenario really is very unlikely and maybe something that can help is to think back on every time you've worried about something and then try and judge honestly looking back months or years later what proportion of that worry was actually warranted and how much of it do you look back on and think fuck i wish i didn't worry about that right you have to learn from that trying to avoid disappointment so if you prepare yourself for the worst then maybe when it finally happens you won't be so disappointed that's the theory anyway but i don't really think it's a great one because i don't think you actually manage to avoid any disappointment i think you just choose a longer slower form of it you just choose the poison drip over getting hit by a bus, right? And secondly, even if you did somehow manage to avoid disappointment, I don't think trying to avoid disappointment is really a legitimate method of attaining a happy life, right? Because off the top of my head, the only people who I can think of who avoid disappointment often are spoiled people who you know, ironically, find it difficult to ever actually be happy. Habit slash confirmation bias. Seek and you shall find, right? There's a book called The Secret by Rhonda Byrne and she talks about 
the law of attraction, right? Which is just to summarize, basically you're supposed to like think about positive shit and then positive shit somehow manifests in your life because of some mad pseudoscientific explanation about frequency and waves and shit. Like obviously that's complete garbage, but in reality, thinking positively may actually have legitimate, genuine positive effects on your life. Maybe through knock on tangible impacts that your thinking has on how you act, but also a big part of that is simply confirmation bias because you are looking out for it and what you are looking out for, you assign more significance to. So if you are thinking, right, I'm thinking positive, so positive stuff is gonna happen to me, then when something positive does happen to you, you're like, ah, oh, it's working, right? That's confirmation bias and it works both ways. So if you are somebody who tells yourself that you always have bad luck and bad shit always happens to you and the universe is just out to get you, then, it will almost become some kind of self-fulfilling prophecy because you are always on the lookout for it. So when something bad happens, you're like, see, told you. And this just feeds into and creates and fuels a habitual cycle of worry. You're under the impression that you're supposed to be in control. The irony is you can become so obsessed with self-preservation that you waste the very life you are trying so hard to protect because you're too worried about getting hurt or being embarrassed or if your hair looks shit, right? It probably looks shit. And you're not worried enough about wasting the very brief limited period of time you have as a conscious being on this earth between birth and death, right? And even that, if you worry too much about making the most of every moment, you put too much pressure on it and you suffocate it. So, you just gotta let go, you just gotta submit. Some people call it submitting to God, you know, I call it submitting to the unpredictable chaos of the universe because you are a part of that chaos, right? Essentially, you are one and the same thing. It's not you versus the universe, you're not trying to tame it, right? You are it, right? This is getting abstract, but the point is, if you wanna be in control, you will be left wanting. One day, Little Jimmy was born, and as soon as little Jimmy could begin to form cogent thoughts, his parents told him, Jimmy, life is the most precious gift of all. You must protect it at all costs. So little Jimmy used his stabilizers, wore his armbands, stayed away from contact sports, kept to the speed limit, and sure as hell, never went and got weird in Ibiza. He did take his vitamins though, and he lived a long and healthy life. But when it came his time to die, he looked back on his 90 plus years reflectively and thought, well, he didn't think much. There were no highlights, not much to really ruminate on or reminisce about, and certainly nothing to flash before his eyes had he gone out quickly. It was vanilla from start to finish, and he realised that the very act of protecting his life is what squandered it. Living so cautiously was an abstract form of suicide, he thought. And so the moral of the story is go to Ibiza? There is nothing to fear but fear itself. Frankie D. Roosevelt. So I was going to spend five minutes going deep on how I interpret this quote, but it comes down to this. In a literal sense, there is lots to fear. Getting eaten by a crocodile, dying of cancer, forgetting to delete your internet search history. But all of it boils down to controlling what you can and letting go of the rest. Because if you can control it, you don't need to fear it. And if you can't, there's no point fearing it. Controlling what you can is just part of being a person with their shit together. And letting go of what you can't is merely an acceptance of the rules of the game. So, do your homework so you don't need to worry about failing your exams, lose weight so you don't need to worry about diabetes, and for everything else you can't control, i.e. most of it, submit. Let go. If you can do that, there's really nothing left, and then you can be free.